This is Josh here from Inside Wrestling Truth, and today's guest is Reed Bentley. Reed, how you doing today, man? Good, man. How you doing? Pretty good. My first question for you is, how did you get into the business, and who trained you? I broke in in late 2009, early 2010. Uh, I moved out to Louisville to go to uh, UofL to go to college, and uh, got up with a couple of guys who... Where there's a wrestling promotion in Kentucky that was about to start, like they'd been caught running shows without a license and stuff, hmm. so they went legit and like they had a little quote unquote school, but uh, it wasn't really much of uh, as far as training goes. Like nobody knew what they were doing, so I just started going out there and kind of teaching myself how to bump and stuff. And uh, Cash Flow came around, Cash Flow from IWA yeah. Mid South, and I really did my basics and like uh, beginnings of psychology and stuff like that with him. So uh, and then from there, I just started doing seminars with. Uh, Nigel, uh, Drake, guys like that, you know, all throughout, uh, anywhere I traveled, anywhere I went that had a show or had a seminar, that's where I would try and be at. What guys did you follow growing up? <clears throat> um, I was kind of a guy who grew up mainly on indie wrestling. Like, I watched WWE, WCW, and stuff like that. I was yeah. from the South, so, like, I started out on WCW, of course. Like, I love Sting. Like, to mm -hmm. me, he was the coolest guy in the world. And uh, Shawn Michaels was my WWF guy. But once I, you know, nine or ten, like I started finding out about indies, had you know terrible dial-up internet, so I was on you know Angel Fire looking mm -hmm. up like terrible shitty indie wrestling sites, and uh, like I really started following like IWA Mid South uh, and stuff like that. So I was immediately drawn to guys like Punk, Hero, uh, Cabana, guys like that. So that was really what I watched was I was an IWA kid, you know, and then eventually yeah. Ring of Honor and stuff like that. Tell me about the High School Heroes and how it came about. Uh, high School Heroes was one of the uh, like first first groups that I was in. Um, we were just like a little shitty faction, you know. We were uh, Kentucky, Indiana, like around here. These uh, Southern Indiana, Kentucky type shows that I was doing when I first broke in. It was me, Cage Cutler, and Matt Atreya. We uh, usually traveled to shows together. We were all friends. Um, we all, you know, were usually heel at the places we went, so eventually we just started kind of teaming up. And uh, we did a couple, like, we went SCW, I think they were like AWA Supreme for a while, is what they were called, in Madison, Indiana. Yeah. And uh, that's where we started doing it, and we did like a little web show for a couple of months. And uh, then eventually for Cash, he was running his own promotion, like APW, we feuded with him and uh, Steve Marino, the Godfathers, and had some matches. That's actually one of the High School Heroes matches, is where I ended up taking like 23 chops from Cash. Wow. And there's like a video up online, just like a chop compilation of just me afterwards, like hamburger meat chest, you I know? Bet. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about working Dreamwave Wrestling. Uh, I just started working for Dreamwave this year, actually. Uh, my good friend Christian Rose has been working for them for going on two years. Uh, or actually, he just hit two years, I think. So he was the first one out of our group to start going there. And then eventually, Matt Cage, Alex Castle, uh, and a lot of my friends started uh, wrestling there. And I started in, I believe it was June, I wrestled Shane Hollister at like one of, basically one of their house shows. They run a lot of fair shows during the, uh, during the summer when it's nice out. And uh, I, I mean, I love Dreamwave. I can't put it over enough. Like, it's a great place. If you're in the Illinois area and you're not going to Dreamwave, you're really messing up. They bring a former WWE guy in every month. Yeah. Lots of good indie dudes. Tons of really, really good quality wrestling. You're always going to get what you pay for. Packed shows, five, six hundred people. It's really good stuff. What has been your worst injury? Uh, I've honestly never had a bad injury, like even outside of wrestling. I've done some really stupid stuff. I was a dumb kid. You know, I backyard wrestled and wrestled with my cousins and stuff and rode like BMX bikes. Like I was uh, rollerbladed. Like I did every, anything stupid you could do as a kid, and I've managed to, uh, I attribute it to drinking a lot of milk. I drink like half a gallon of milk a day, so I assume <laughs> that's why I've never broken anything. What's been your favorite company to work for if you have one? Uh, working for IWA was a big thing. The first time I worked for Mid South was I did like a tryout show when I was just a few months into the business and had a terrible match with Cage Cutler that like five people maybe have seen because nobody ever bought that DVD. Um, it was real bad, and uh, I mean I didn't have any place in a wrestling ring at that point. I didn't know what I was doing, and then eventually I came back and worked uh, the King of the Death matches in 2011. I ended up filling in for the tournament, and wrestled uh, Rory Mondo in like an ultra violent TLC. Had a six man the next night, like a loser six man, and then uh, like wrestled Jimmy, and then most recently in 2013, like when we he and started running again in June and July, I went back and wrestled again. So for me, at least personally, 
uh, like sentimental wise, working mid south was probably the most fun thing I've ever done. As far as like biggest thing I've ever done, probably going to National Pro Wrestling Day back in the beginning of the year in Philly. Over a thousand people. Like you always hear about the electricity of a, a Philly crowd. You know, yeah. it was everything it was cracked up to be. So that's probably the biggest thing I've done so far. Who's been the worst promoter you've worked for? Worst promoter. Um, oh man, there's several. Um, first place I ever worked for was or wrestled for, I should say, was SHW, which is strictly hardcore wrestling in Corridan, Indiana. They run like out of a barn that's on the guy's property. Um, he's a nice dude and all, but I mean, you know, you know how nice dudes go in wrestling. You know, he's a mm -hmm. nice guy, but um, it's not like he pays anything. It's not like they're promoted. There's like a bunch of fans or anything. He's just kind of, he's a goof. He wasn't like a terrible promoter. Like if he told me he was going to give me $5, he'd give me $5. Um, and then the other place that I first started wrestling for when I broke in was LCW Live Wire Championship Wrestling. Really great original names. Um, he's just a goof too. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like he has no place running wrestling, so it's kind of <laughs> just like he he doesn't know like how to run a wrestling show. So I don't have any bad stories. Like oh fuck that guy, he didn't pay me my money. You know, like nothing like that. What guys do you dislike in the Indies? Um, I mean, I hate everyone. I don't like anyone in wrestling or in real life. I, I across the board kind of hate everyone. Um, as a general guideline, I don't like goofs like I don't like people that aren't dedicated if you don't take wrestling as seriously as I do if it's not you know what makes you get up in the morning if it's just a thing you do if it's just a hobby for you that's fine but you're not the kind of person I want to associate with like for me it's my life it motivates all the decisions I make I work the job I work I buy the things I buy I eat the foods I eat I go to the gym when I do because I want to be a better wrestler so for me wrestling is life it's not just something that we put on t-shirts because we thought it was cute you know like it's it's the truth for me. So if you if you're a goofball, if you're not going to take wrestling seriously, um, if you're going to treat it like a joke, then you're not somebody I want to associate with. Who are some of the people in the Indies that you can call real friends? Um, Trip Cassidy was, as far as outside of my own bubble, was the first guy I ever met um, that I immediately hit it off with. He was the first guy, my first singles tag partner. Um, I love Trip to death. Like we've done a lot of stuff together. We've wrestled together a lot. Uh, my wrestle fan, the reason I wear this uh, dog tag right here, it would be for uh, Matt Cage, Alex Castle, Christian Rose. Uh, I mean, they're the closest things to, I don't have any brothers, I'm an only child, but they're the closest thing, you know, to brothers in wrestling that I have. Um, my, I met my best friend, Nick Manawa, through wrestling. He's not a wrestler, but, you know, he's been around IWA and stuff since he was a kid. He's uh, Ian's brother-in-law. He's only like 25. He's my... Uh, you know, my best friend, I just, uh, last Saturday, I was the best man in his wedding. So, I mean, everybody that I keep close to me, uh, all those guys are, uh, you know, guys like Cage Cutler, you know, that set this up. He's a guy I've known since day one, since the first time I set foot in a wrestling ring. Guys that I just, uh, regardless of where they've went or what they've done or, you know, what anybody else thinks about them, they're my guys. So, I can't say a bad thing about anyone, anyone like that. If you could work with anybody in the Indies, who would it be? Um, right now, I would, uh, hmm, that's a good question, I don't know, I, uh, I would really like to work, uh, Eric, I would like to wrestle Eric Cannon again, one-on-one, -on -one. um, I wrestled Cannon last year in February for IWAU, um, I love Cannon, he's one of my really close friends too, um, and I'd love to, like, mix it up one-on-one -on -one with him again, uh, as far as guys I've never wrestled one-on-one, -on -one, I'd like to wrestle, uh, Davey Vega, I just wrestled him in a tag match on Sunday at Vanguard, the Sex Bombs, uh, Davey Vega and Matt Fitchett. I'd really like to wrestle Vega one-on-one. -on -one. Um, nobody comes right off the top of my head. I, I might find come with something by the end of it, I'll, I'll let you know. What's been your favorite match that you've been in so far? Favorite match would probably be for personal reasons probably the Cannon match because like I said I grew up on IWA like I was I was part of what I feel like at least is this first generation of indie wrestlers that grew up on indie wrestling so me getting to wrestle Cannon was a big deal Cannon was one of the guys I idolized he was uh, listed as a hero on my MySpace page so I mean <laughs> wrestling Cannon for me was you know a big deal the only other person more so than that that I haven't never got to wrestle and you know I would love to but it probably won't happen due to you know him having a WWE contract would be uh, Chris Hero like Hero and Cannon's feud was like the thing that 
really first like super sucked me in about indie wrestling you know like such intense you know intense uh, like a rivalry good matches you know just everything overall it was it was awesome what titles have you held if you held any um i felt like a title in wrestling and it was the live wire championship wrestling kentucky state title i was the champion of the whole entire state apparently at least that's what they told me so uh that would be the only yeah that's the only belt i think i've ever won in wrestling What's been the worst moment in your career, if you have one? Uh, worst moment in my career was probably the first time I wrestled Jimmy Jacobs one-on-one. Uh, I wrestled Jimmy in November of 2011, so almost two years ago, uh, and he just was not, he wasn't Jimmy, like he was going through, you know, like a bad period, and he just was not in the mood to wrestle that night. Like, we got out there, things just did not click at all, and it went on for forever. I don't know why we kept going like we did. Like I don't know why we didn't just take it home, but it went on for so long it seemed like uh, like Matt Cage watches it back and tells me that it's like watching uh, a movie that has a sex scene with your parents. Like him watching that match was just uncomfortable for him. Like watching it back it's really not that bad of a match. Um, like it's fine. Like it's not stuff that, you know, the untrained eye is going to notice. It just wasn't very good. So for me, uh, it was just fucking heartbreaking because I grew up also watching Jimmy like for me Jimmy Jacobs like oh man that's a guy I can look up to he's a little dude he's done all this stuff he's been all over the world uh, he's a great feud guy like nobody can touch Jimmy like when he's in a program when he's got somebody steady to wrestle you know but uh, I have I got to redeem that I wrestled him in July him and Zach Gallon me and Trick Davis who I'm wrestling with tonight actually in this building uh, against the uh, British kids me and Trick wrestled Zach and Jimmy and so I kind of got to redeem that a little bit what do you think is the future of independent wrestling? Um, right now, I think indie wrestling is kind of a, uh, like a transitional point. Um, so many dudes are getting signed. So many guys are going to the WWE that there are a lot of spots opening up and there are companies closing down. You know, like Chikara is no longer running at this point. Um, the Wrestling Is Network is kind of like filtering out and doing you know, something. Like nobody knows what's going on there. Um, so I, th I think it's really it's a time for guys to step it up like everyone across the board you know from the lowest level guys breaking in to dudes who are top guys on the indies right now and want to you know like break the glass ceiling you know there's only there's there's only so many top guys left you know you've got your Kevin Steens your Michael Elgins uh, you know your Drake Youngers and I mean so many dudes are gone there's just such a uh, there's gonna be such a just a vortex left you know such a void to fill so. I think it's going to be interesting to see who at this point steps up, what companies kind of step it up to be the next uh, like big deal, the next indie big indie company. What are some of the most crappy indie shows you have been to? Um, that I've just been to like as a fan, or yeah. uh, when I was a kid, I went to a place. It's called Bluegrass Championship Wrestling. That when I broke into wrestling, I think it just recently stopped running shows. They run more like out in eastern Kentucky, uh, which is where I was originally from. Is from Pike County. Um, they are just... It was the weirdest thing. They had like a fake Dudley family, and they had like guys with these like rip-off like PJ Styles and stuff like that. I'm just like all these terribly, just obviously ripped-off gimmicks. Um, and recently, in recent memory, I've been to... Uh, several LCW shows because I wrestled there for just a couple of months when I started and realized that literally everyone there was untrained. There was not one person there who wasn't just a backyarder that had a license. Um, and their shows are just abysmal. They make no sense. There's <laughs> nothing linear about them. Like, the heel will win the match and then a ref will come out and restart the match only for the heel to win again. These right. just things that don't make any sense. Yeah, just the bad. stupidest things. That's probably the worst thing I've been to in recent memory. What do you think about WWE and TNA currently? Um, I haven't watched TNA steadily since 2009. And even then it was hard to do. Um, I love what WWE is doing right now. I think here in the last couple of years, probably since 2011, 2011, 2012, 2013, they've stepped it back up. Like For a long time it was boring for me to watch. You know, like yeah. I knew... I'll never not say, it doesn't matter how bad they are, how bad the ratings are, WWE is still the best wrestling company in the world. Right. It doesn't matter what they do. They can put 
you know, Judy Bagwell out there wrestling again, but mm -hmm. they're the best wrestling company in the world. Um, but they've really, like, really, really stepped the product up. Like, I feel like they've brought in so many different riders from different fields and from spots in the business. They're signing indie dudes left and right, like I said. So there's a really good mix. Like, it's really fresh lately. It's, you know, you're not seeing the same old tired stuff. So I'm a fan of what is on, you know, WWE television right now. As far as TNA goes, uh, the one or two times I've watched it, I've seen that it's nothing but like Hogan stuff and like Bubba Ray has made himself champion. So like it's nothing that I'm interested in at all. What legend would you like to work with if you could? Um hmm. I almost had I almost got to wrestle Jerry Lawler, uh, not too long ago at Dreamwave. It was gonna be myself and, and Lawler and uh, it fell on the same day as Manawal's wedding. So I had to like bow out and uh, he actually ended up not even being able to make it anyway, so Matt Cage replaced me, and Devon Dudley replaced uh, Jerry Lawler. So it's That's this cool. really weird, you know, six degrees of, oh man, we can't get Jerry Lawler. Let's see if Devon's available. You know, <laughs> yeah. just two totally different kind of dudes. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'd probably, I'd honestly really like to wrestle Tracy, Tracy Smothers, um, especially now that he's kind of getting out and doing more stuff lately. Mm -hmm. He's doing AIW on the regular. He's done a couple of CZW shots. So. I'd really like to wrestle Tracy or like Ricky Morton, like dudes like that who can just still go at you know, 50, 60 years yeah. old. What do you think about hardcore wrestling? Uh, I'm a fan of hardcore wrestling. I'm not at all like a, an opponent of garbage or anything like that. I think it's, uh, I think hardcore is just like anything else. It's a, it's a niche part of wrestling. Everything, pro wrestling is a variety show, so you got to have a lot of different things to make the world go around. If I was running my own show, I would have my regular wrestling, I'd have a tag match, a girls match, a hardcore match. You know, it's supposed to be a variety show. That's what made, for my opinion, at least like early Ring of Honor, 0, 02 through 05, 06 Ring of Honor, you know, it was like the heyday because you had everything. You had a hardcore match, you had a high flying match, a lucha match, international stars, top indie dudes, technical stuff. You had every match was different. Nothing was the same. So, uh, yeah, I, I love hardcore wrestling. I do like an annual deathmatch tournament. Like every year, I'll pick a different deathmatch tournament and go into it like I did 2011 it was king of the death kind of somewhat by accident and then uh, seven deadly sins for chaos pro last year so I like it what's your favorite style of wrestling um, to watch as a fan I really enjoy um, like old school technical type wrestling not super old so I should say like Dean Malenko Chris Benoit uh, Eddie Guerrero guys like that that was Benoit for me was my guy, I watched the Hard Knocks DVD so many times that I don't even know how it still plays on my DVD player because it's been watched so many times. So, for me, dudes with big throws, solid strikes, and good like catch and chain wrestling games, that was what I was into. William Regal, dudes like that. What's been your favorite area to work? Um, I'm I'm really attached to Illinois at this point. Like as far as I love the Midwest. Like I've been out to the East Coast and wrestled a couple of times now. I like the East Coast, but um, I don't know there's something different about Midwest indie wrestling for me. Everything's kind of, we're not on a territory system, but it's kind of like territories. you got the same guys out here, the same guys on the East Coast, West Coast with, you know, PWG and the two other promotions there, Florida, um, and guys, you know, the bigger dudes travel in and out, and they go everywhere, but I really feel like Midwest indie wrestling, due to its roots of, like, it had the initial, like, USWA, Memphis-style wrestling, and on top of that, after that you had IWA, which kind of set the tone for, in you know, 2004 you couldn't touch IWA. That was the best wrestling show around. There wasn't anybody else doing that. So that's kind of where, for my opinion at least, that's kind of where like modern indie style, modern indie wrestling promotions kind of like flourished and took root. You know, that's kind of where the formula was ironed out was in the West. Give me one word that defines Reed Bentley. Uh, asshole. Uh, I'm a terrible person. Uh, if you like me, you know you like me. And if I like you, you know I like you. If I don't like you, you know I don't like you. So I'm not, I'm not a fake person at all in wrestling. There's plenty of people I don't like. I don't have to, you know, name names. Like they know I don't like them. It's not anything that I'm, I have to make, you know, a public issue about. I'm not like a boisterous person in that way. I'm not all about, you know, trying to. I don't have heat with anyone in the business because to me you have to matter to me for me to have heat with you and I don't care enough about uh, people that are going to bother me like that so I'm a 
I'm just me. I'm Reed Bentley. You know, I'm, I'm fun-loving, carefree. I enjoy wrestling. So if I enjoy wrestling and you enjoy wrestling, we're on a show together, we're probably going to get along. If you show up and you're one of these people who shows up, well, I'm not really going to do much tonight. I'll see if I can just bump once or twice you know, and get out of it. I don't, like, I don't have anything for you. I like wrestling. I show up because I want to wrestle. I want to go out there and you know, have fun. I, I wrestle for me. I wake up every day and put my body through what I put it through because I want to wrestle. I'm not going out there and, and wrestling for you. Who's the stiffest guy you ever worked? Um, Cannon was up there uh, because the match was billed by the promoter, not by us, by IWAU. They billed it as hard hitter versus hard hitter. Um, on their like February show, each match kind of had a, a theme. Uh, it was like high flyer versus high flyer. You had Danny Cannon versus Ricochet, um, you know, man versus man of like Darren Corbin versus Gunnar Franks, like a man versus man comedy match. So ours is hard hitter. So we kind of had to live up to um, live up to that name. That and uh, there's somebody else. Davy surprisingly was not at all like everyone thinks that Davy Richards is like. It's just brutal, like gets in there and fucks dudes up. Like Davey knows what he's doing. He's a safe worker. He knows how to get in there and he knows how to wrestle. Like he didn't he barely touched me on anything. Like the sliding kick, uh, like near the end of the match, if you watch me and Davey, everyone thinks he like took my face off with it, he barely even touched me. So uh probably for my money, just because we had to get in there and really, really lay it in, probably can I? Is there one guy that you study, you know, you studied their work? Um, Hero was like my big indie guy, so I mean that obviously shines through in my wrestling. You know, I get a lot of crap from people all the time of uh, being, you know, Chris Hero light, you know, or Chris Hero Jr. Um, which I mean, I don't at all, I don't all agree with that because I don't think I at all live up to that, not at this point in my career at least. Um, but you know, I throw a lot of strikes, a lot of forearms, um, stuff like that. So Hero was like I. I kind of change my creator wrestler around like I want this guy's this and this guy's this but overall for me as far as like psychology and ring like pl match planning goes like Hero was always my guy as far as being like a dastardly bastard heel like Tully Blanchard if you go back and watch Tully like there's nobody meaner he wasn't a big dude and nobody had he had no wasted motion like you can go back and watch Tully Blanchard and he doesn't take a step in the ring that doesn't mean something so for me it was guys like uh, like Tully was, you know, that he was my heel guy, like my match planning or like wrestling type guy was hero. Um, and as far as just like uh, charisma, wild being out there, um, you know, obviously I like Sting and Shawn Michaels. You know, those are my WCW and WWF guys. So that's where I kind of, that's who I watched for uh, like charisma and just overall uh, crazy loud they were both like loud dudes you know like for different mm. reasons you know right. Shawn Michaels because he was boosted up and crazy mm -hmm. at the time you know so but uh, they were loud dudes tell the people why they should come out <clears throat> and buy a ticket to watch a Reed Bentley match uh, I'll look into the webcam for this one still looking at you uh, is this gonna go out on video or is it just audio and uh, you just it, like rip the audio it'll be a video oh, okay um, well, in that case, if you're going to come out and watch a Reed Bentley match, I guarantee you, uh, no matter what else is on the show, no matter what else is on the card, uh, I'm going to work as hard or harder than anybody else on the card. That nobody else is going to put as much effort into it um, in entertaining you and doing what I need to do. My role, I fill my role on the show as well as anybody else can. So I'm going to come out. You are going to... You're going to interact with me whether you want to or not. You're going to come out. You're not just going to give me your ticket money and sit there on your hands, even if that's what you want to do. I'm going to force you to, to interact with me one way or the other. Boo me, cheer me, something. But you're going to come out. And you're going to you're going to go home, and I'm going to leave an impression on you. Uh, Reed, I appreciate you doing this interview with me. Uh, is there any last words or anything you want to say to your fans? Uh, no, thanks for I mean, thanks for supporting me. I wouldn't be able to do what I do in wrestling. Wouldn't be able to have wrestling shows without fans. You know used to be able to say that and then beyond wrestling started running without fans yeah. but uh you know it takes people we have to have people to buy dvds we have to have people to come out and watch shows we have to have people to interact with i can put on the best five-star classic in the world but um it's not going to matter if there's nobody in the crowd to react to it like vanguard wrestling is a perfect example of that like they'll draw 
eight or twelve people sometimes with these like crazy stacked like tons of indie dude cards and it's just different you know so thank you for supporting me thank you for supporting indie wrestling continue coming out and doing so and giving me a platform to do what i love to do so, thank you